Hi, this is Victoria Nolle, and here with me is Dr. Darren McCauley, the director of the St. Andrews Sustainability Institute, and he is also a senior lecturer in the School of Geography and Sustainable Development at the University of St. Andrews. Today we're going to discuss two topics. First, we shall tackle energy justice, and under energy justice, Dr. McCauley will tell us about the connection between fossil fuels and energy justice, and also we shall tackle alternative fuels and energy justice. And then in the third video, we shall discuss about the geographical perspectives of energy justice. And then in the second series, we shall talk about a transition to a low carbon economy. But before we start, I'd like Darren to introduce himself. Thank you very much for the invitation, Victoria. I'm delighted to be here. Uh, so indeed, I am the director uh, for the St. Andrew Sustainability Institute and have been so for the last seven years. I've also conducted a wide range of energy related, both academic and commercial projects mm -hmm. around uh, the area of energy justice. And uh, I want to talk about a number of issues today in relation to some of the experiences I've had in those projects and perhaps enlighten in some way mm. on the connection between energy justice and the realities that we face in the energy sector. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So the first video we want to focus on fossil fuels and energy justice. Could you please give us a brief overview of this connection? Yes, happy to. Um, I think fossil fuels is central to our energy system globally and I think whenever we think about energy and the role of ethics uh, in relation to energy systems we have to consider fossil fuels. So around 82% of our global energy system is determined by fossil fuels. Whether it be coal, oil, gas, doesn't matter. How you, how you define the picture around fossil fuels, we need to consider the ethical implications of pursuing policies that both promote and develop fossil fuels. So I think there are two components here. The first component is we need to find more effective and hopefully more ethical ways of developing our fossil fuel energy systems. And the second component is we also need to find a way to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels because no matter what side of the fence you stand on we have to realize that we are now primarily signatures of the Paris Climate Change Agreement. Mm -hmm. And as a result, we do have to face up to the fact that we're going to have to reduce our use of fossil fuels. But don't forget the first point, and the first point is we're still very heavily dependent on fossil fuels and we need to find better, more effective, and hopefully more just ways of developing and extracting fossil fuels. Okay, uh, so in that respect, how, what is the connection between fossil fuels and energy justice? Because yes. I'll talk from the African perspective or yes. developing countries Please. that are still relying on these resources to develop themselves. Yes. And also we consider the fact that uh, for developed countries, let's say in Europe, the UK, they've benefited a lot from coal in the past. So what is the connection between fossil fuels and energy justice? energy justice. Yes, no, that's, so that sort of sets out the broad picture. Yes. But the connection with the ethics mm. uh, standpoint is, well, first of all, you've got intragenerational issues and intergenerational issues. Mm -hmm. So intragenerationally speaking is what you raised. And that's the fact that the developed world, broadly speaking, has had the opportunity to maximize the use of fossil fuels historically. And although the world has decided that we want to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels, that has impacts for developing countries. And we have to be aware of that. And we need to think about new mechanisms of effectively allowing developing countries to hopefully develop in a way which is potentially dependent upon fossil fuels, but also where we're trying to subsidize and help their development in a way that means that they don't have to rely entirely on fossil fuels. So here I'm thinking about uh, really trying to think uh, in new ways of investing in renewables within developing world contexts and trying to get the wealth that developed countries have uh, effectively received over this historical context that, that I outlined previously um, in a way to try to help them develop renewable uh, energy in the future. Because 
uh, I think if we don't do that, if we don't face up to that historical inter intergenerational injustice, then we're not going to get solutions. And then secondly, um, intergenerationally uh, speaking, we also have to be aware of the fact that there's a geographical diversity with regards to the way that uh, we approach our energy policies. And we shouldn't think of developed countries and developing countries as two brackets which are the same. There are developing countries where there are fossil fuel resources which we have to think of how do we extract those perhaps through the use of CCS, coal or carbon capture storage, uh, perhaps through use of, of better, more uh, environmentally uh, sensitive techniques for extraction. Um, and then uh, of those other countries in the developing world where they don't have the fossil fuel resources, we need to think of ways of trying to help them develop renewable sources because quite often they do have renewable sources, water, wind, uh, etc. Okay. Thank you very much and that marks the end of our first video. In the second video we shall tackle uh, alternative fuels that is renewable. He has already uh, talked about it briefly but in the second video we shall discuss about renewable energy and energy justice. Stay tuned.